Welcome back inside m and Bank Stadium, home of the Baltimore Ravens. I'm Bobby Broyles along with Brandon Noble. And now we got the main Black Bears here on the set with us with head coach Joe Harris Simiak on my left. Far in, we have Drew Belcher and Sterling Shep uh, Sheffield here on my right. And gentlemen, first of all, welcome to BD Day. What's it been like, you know, as players coming into the NFL Stadium? Um, it was great just being able to see all the players and uh, all the teams, be able to talk to the coaches and uh, media and meeting uh, Arthur Motes was a uh, it's a great, great experience. Um, I just love being down here in Baltimore. Um, it was just a great time in general. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I just I was looking for Pat Ricard. I can't find him. <laughs> where where? I'm trying to where find is him. He? He's probably sleeping. Yeah. Um, Get, knowing him. As he so, gets ready for camp, right? Exactly. No, no, this is great. I mean, obviously, for these guys to get down here, this is my third year doing this, and mm -hmm. it's uh, it's a great experience to see all the, the guys from the CA come together, and what a special league it is, and this day kind of um, really shows you that and kind of the level of excellence that we're going for. Coach, obviously, a uh, you know, tough season for the Black Bears last year. A lot of close losses, though, right on the cusp. What are some of the expectations as you head into 2018? You know, I think uh, I was just talking to my man over here. Uh, you know, November has been tough for us. We were one in five in November the last two years, and mm -hmm. we've kind of had our, uh, our chances, you know, mm -hmm. going into that month. And I think in this league, that's really your goal is yeah. to give yourself a chance in November. And we've had that. We just haven't gotten it done. It's all on us, uh, you know, coaches, players, the, the program. So we got to get to that point. Yep. And certainly uh, we have a challenging schedule out of the gate uh, with a really exciting game, obviously, against New Hampshire on August 30th. But uh, if we can get ourselves in that position again, I think the experience that we've gained mentally the last two years um, will help us in those situations again. And like I said, we tell it to these guys all the time. We just want an opportunity uh, to, to prove ourselves and to, to compete in this league, and hopefully we get that chance again. Sterling, going off of that, you guys open up with New Hampshire, yeah. right? So yeah. it's, it's a little different having it up at the, at the beginning of the season. Yes, sir. Does that help a little bit going into camp? Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, the, uh, last year was kind of the same way, just being able to uh, um, practice and, and uh, work work hard and work against uh, uh, against UNH and uh, our rivals and it, every single time UNH week comes, uh, we we're very focused, determined, and we need and in the locker room we need to get this win. We are uh, we're we're very like I said we're very focused and um, um, UNH is a great team, uh, great coaching staff, great players, um, but we we, we have a, we, are, we have a really good chance this year to possibly come up top. Come on top. Drew, I'm really intrigued by your story. You began your main career behind center. You were the quarterback and now playing tight end last year. Just kind of talk about how that all kind of came about in the transition and how you fit in this offense now. Uh, yeah, it was definitely, you know, it was a big transition for me. Uh, kind of a week before the season last year, before the UNH game, uh, the coaches came up to me. They told me uh, Ferguson won the job and they said, you know, I think you'd fit in a tight end. And they're like, we want you to play right away. And, you know, I had to trust in them, which I do. Coach Harris Simiak. And at the time, we had Coach Cohen and Coach Bacucci, who guys really I trust and believe in. Um, and so, yeah, they told me they wanted me to make the transition. They wanted me to play 40, 50 snaps against UNH, which at the time seems a little, you know, lofty. I hadn't really taken it. I've never <laughs> yeah. blocked someone in my life or anything like that. So yeah. um, it was exciting. You know, it was kind of, I knew all the offense, obviously, playing quarterback. So that made the transition easy. But, you know, the coaches really helped me out making the, be able to switch over and then I was able to you know I played probably 40 something snaps in the UNH game you know a week before that I was playing quarterback so you know as the season went on they did a great job of easing me into the transition making you know learn me uh, make or help me learn all you know different little things at tight end and uh, you know definitely paid off. So, so you go from a position where you never get touched to a position where you've got to touch somebody on every play. I mean, how, how was that? Look, I'm an old D lineman, so I know the quarterbacks, you know, you don't touch them, stay away from them, right? Well, I mean, what, what, I look, and I watched you play last year, and you, and you definitely got better as a blocker. I mean, what was that transition like? Yeah, now you get hit by guys yeah. like hey, him over hey, here. Hey, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Drew's a real, he's developed a lot. It just yeah. being able to go, go up against him every day is just, it's helped me as a player, and it's helped him too as a player, just being able to go against each other. Yeah, yeah I think, you know, uh, <laughs> In practice, I had a little bit of a bounty on my head because I was in a red jersey. <laughs> definitely. You know, we the first we definitely years. did so have a bounty to, on him. You know, <laughs> chirp a little bit. No one was able to touch me. But, um, <laughs> yeah, that was definitely probably the biggest thing is learn how to block and stuff. You know, the routes and stuff kind of came easier. Um, it was just, you know, being able to cut and doing all that. But, um, yeah, no, it was definitely a lot different. But when I played quarterback, I ran the ball a lot. Right. Uh, you know, I had a couple games with 20 carries here and there. So the physicality of the game never really scared me. It was never, you know, something even playing quarterback that I wasn't used to. So that made the transition easier as well. 
Speaking of quarterback, Chris Ferguson comes back. You know, pretty good freshman year for, you know, 18, 19 year old coming out of high school. Yeah. You know, talk about his development as you, uh, you know, this offseason and what do you expect from him and this offense as a whole as you head into a new season? Yeah, I think the first thing, uh, you know, just about Drew making that switch, that's not easy. Yeah. And I give him a lot of credit for that. And uh, he's probably the best teammate we have on the team. And that's what Maine's all about. So I wanted to hit on that because that's uh, to do that as a junior. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't want to do that because they're thinking about themselves. And uh, Drew just really exemplifies everything we talk about putting the team first. But, um, you know, with Ferg, um, certainly um, year one to year two, there mm -hmm. should be a big, uh, you know, leap forward in his progression as a quarterback. I thought he got off to a really good start last year. You know, hit a wall a little bit in the middle against some quality, quality teams yep. um, that loaded the box, and we're going to make him beat him with, with his arm. Mm -hmm. um, and certainly toward the end of the year, he gave us a chance in those November games to win. So I think uh, the biggest thing with Fergus, I think our teammates, or excuse me, his teammates are really starting to realize the type of player he is. They're rallying around him, whereas when you have a freshman quarterback, I think some guys question, um, you know, how that's going to go. Um, and this spring ball was great. Summer, we, we've had a great job. Um, with these guys up on campus, and I'm really looking forward to seeing not only his progression, but uh, certainly the offense as a whole. All right, Sterling, here's the question of the day, man. I'm ready, I'm ready. Are you sure? Home, All man. right. <laughs> what do you like about training camp? Training camp. What I love about training camp. Love, oh, you love oh, stuff you, about you training camp. Yeah, yeah, I, like, I like love. love. Okay. What I love about training camp is just <laughs> being able to be with my brothers, being able to be with the uh, – uh, build the relationship and the chemistry that we have as a team throughout camp. We've been up there all summer. Um, some people who went in and out and, and everything, and um, uh, we, were, we were able to build a relationship there. But just being able to uh, hang out with guys uh, who, who are going to be able to help us uh, during the games, guys like Kayon Whitaker, guys like Charles Mitchell on the offense, guys like Jaquan Blair, and uh, rising guys like uh, Jerron Grayer and Deshaun Stevens, just, just like guys like that just are very, very – they, they have a great work ethic, and just being able to rally behind uh, those guys and me and Belcher and, and uh, the upperclassmen on the team, uh, it, it helps the younger guys that just came in, the freshmen and everything, um, uh, get acclimated and, and, and be, be ready for uh, UNH on August 30th. That's our first genuine pure love of training camp from any player we've interviewed yeah, so far today. Yeah, love training camp. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would question that. Toward, towards, 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 the, towards the end, it gets, it gets, it gets kind of annoying, but, uh, but you just st stick your head to the ground and just keep, keep going. Keep, keep, uh, keep do, you, do you have that same passion for training camp here? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is actually, this is going to be my first, you know, quote unquote, real training camp. I've just been throwing passes. Yeah. It's kinda, <laughs> now yeah, going that hasn't me. been too oh, hard yeah. for me I now, so say. now I get to go through the real grind of it. I got a little taste of it in the spring ball so you know it should be fun but everyone knows it's a grind and but it's an opportunity to get better and that's that's what we got to do get better each day don't take a step back and you know just just work through it together coach you guys no coach sorry are you going uh, to talk about winning in november mm. defense wins football games in november yep. to me at the end of the season and maine is known for having a very very good defense you yep. know especially at the caa where there's a lot of very good defenses mm -hmm. Talk about what you guys have to do defensively this year to make sure that in November you're winning those football games. I think the biggest thing that hurt us probably last year um, from an overall standpoint was just a big play in November. I think we had a lot of opportunities defensively where we, we do some things that, you know, we challenge every throw. We, we play a style of defense that we we'll press coverage a lot. We do pressure a lot. Um, and guys were putting in some one-on-one -on -one situations and we lost those. So a uh, big emphasis on, you know, has been on you know, mentally reacting to those big plays and trying not to give them up. But I, I think if we put ourselves in that position again, that year of experience that all these guys have really have under their belt now, you know, Taji Lowe and Jerron Gray, who started alongside uh, Sterling, really for the first time last year, are back. Uh, Kayon Whitaker is back for his second year really playing. Charles Mitchell, uh, Alejandro Oregon up front. So uh, Manny Patterson's back, who led the country in PBU. So we got to fill some spots, but that group as a whole experience-wise should allow us to compete better in those situations. Yeah. Now we asked the folks in New Hampshire, I know you get, it was a little different last year playing for that musket week one instead yeah. of the last week of the so season, you know, there. for the table, we'll start with you, Drew, you know, playing New Hampshire week one. What was that like, first of all, last year, and how excited are you guys to host them for that, what they call, I guess, the Thursday throwdown right now oh. for week one? Yeah, no, it's definitely exciting. I mean, it, you got to get ready for the season. I think it kind of puts a sense of urgency right at the beginning of the year mm -hmm. that you got to come out and you got to play well, especially, you know, the number three ranked team in the country. They've been to the playoffs, you know, however many years in a row. 
we haven't been there the past couple, four or five years. I haven't been there in my career. So it's definitely kind of a program that we, you know, look at how we want to be and model after what they want to do. So, you know, it's definitely going to be a, it's going to be a battle. I mean, the last two years have been fourth quarter heartbreakers. Last year we lost by one point. The year before we lost on a late field goal. So, uh, you know, we got to be ready to go. But I think I think it's a good way to start the season, get the energy going. Uh, we've been having a countdown uh, to U, uh, UNH since uh, the Stony Brook game. Just being able to get back onto the field and being able to uh, um, e execute and learn. This whole season we learned from our mistakes and hopefully we're going to be able to repeat, repeat those mistakes. But um, we, have a lot, uh, we have a lot of confidence going into the game and uh, good luck to New Hampshire. Hopefully, hopefully everything, everybody's safe and everything and healthy, but we're ready. We are ready. Let's go. All right. Well, we look forward to that Thursday night throwdown. Gentlemen, coach, good luck this season. Stay healthy. We look forward to that Thursday night opener. Thanks, guys. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for joining us.